Welcome to another lesson. This time we're going to continue looking at things that can be done with instrumental parts. In the last lesson we just focused on the technical tools available to us in the parts ribbon, but in this lesson we're going to be looking at perhaps some more pragmatic aspects of working with parts and a couple of other features. And the first of these that I would like to discuss is the orange text that we see when working with our parts. If you find this orange highlighting annoying or unhelpful, you can turn it off in the View tab by unchecking Differences in Parts. What this orange text actually does, though, is allows us to see when the position of objects in our parts differs to their position in the score. And so if I select an object in my part and then move it slightly, you'll see that it goes orange, so that you know that there is a layout discrepancy there. And we can actually see this from the other side too, if we wish to. So if we go back to our score, and then to the View tab, and then check the box Differences in Parts, we can now see all of those differences from the score's perspective. Now, whenever we're working on our parts, changing their layout or doing some editing, one thing that you do have to be aware of and careful with is not to change anything in the parts too much. For example, anything that I add or remove from my parts will be added or removed from the score. I personally work a lot with contemporary music, and unfortunately this often requires you to add a lot of things that are only specific to the parts and not to the score or vice versa. And again, unfortunately, often after I had been working on my parts, I discovered that something in my score was broken. For complex situations like this, I then found that the best solution was actually to create two copies of the Sibelius document, a copy for the score and a copy for the part. But this only really makes sense if you do it at the very, very end of a project, when you know that you're completely finished working on the score. After you've finished with the score, you can create a copy of that score and work on the parts in the copy. This is of course a bit annoying if you ever have to make any changes or corrections to your piece, because now you'll have to make the changes in two different documents. But on the upside, You'll never have to worry about ruining your score if you're doing some serious object moving and serious editing in your parts. When we're working on parts for instruments that have long periods of breaks where they just sit around and play nothing, we might want to give our instrumentalists cues in their parts so that they can orientate themselves better during performance. To do this, Go to the score and select the passage of music that you would like to copy into the other voice as a cue. Once you've selected that passage, hit Ctrl C to copy, as usual, then select the empty bars of the system that you would like to add the cue to. To add the cue, we have a special shortcut, Ctrl Alt Shift V. Alternatively, this same function can be found under the Home tab, Paste, and Paste as Q. You will notice in the score that the passage we've now added as a Q is hidden. But if we jump over to the part, there it is, displayed as Q notation. One other thing that you might want when creating your parts are title pages. Just as we would in the score, to create a title page in a part, we have to select the first bar line and then click on Special Page Break in the Layout tab. If you can remember, the shortcut for this is Control shift enter We then have a blank page that we can then add our title to. But, as always, all of the changes we are making here only apply to this current part. If we want our title page to appear in all of our parts, as I mentioned in the last lesson, we go to the Parts tab and copy Part Layout. 
When we do this, our title page gets transferred as well. But, as you can now see, the instrument name has also been carried over and is now incorrect. So this would be a fantastic opportunity to use one of the wild cards that we learnt about previously. The wild card for our parts is backslash dollar sign part name backslash. And so now we have the correct part name appearing in all of our parts. And while we're discussing wild cards, another wild card area of your parts that you might be interested in editing is the header up the top of each page. Currently, the default header just has the instrument name. But what we sometimes might want to do, especially if our instrumentalist has their music floating around on separate, unbound pieces of paper, is to also add the title of the piece to this header. That way, if their music ever gets jumbled up, they can sort it out again quickly. So, first we double-click the header, click No, and now we're in editing mode and we can see the wild card. We want to keep the wild card, but just add the title of the piece. And I could use another wild card here to assign the title, but I'm just going to type it in for the moment. And there we have it our title and instrument in our headings. So that's it. I hope that this was useful or at least interesting. I'll see you in the next lesson.